Hey everyone, welcome back to a new Flutter series in which we are going to create something unique in Flutter. In this video, we are going to create this amazing button with a gradient moving shadow. And as soon as we hover over it, the entire button lights up and inside the button, its color is also moving. When the user clicks on it, the button size decreases a little bit, which create an amazing clickable effect. So let's quickly see how we can create this button in Flutter. All right, so I have created a basic boilerplate for the code. First of all, we have imported the materials dot package. Then inside the main, we are calling the run app, which run the my app. And inside the my app, there is just a material app with a title and a scaffold with a background color of black. And in the center, we are gonna place our glowing button. So let's create a stateful widget. So just type as tf and you'll get this snippet as stateful widget. So just enter it and write the name glowing button. Now inside the button, first of all, we need to define some values. First of all, we need a uh, is hover because we want to activate the certain animation on a hover. So we will need is hover. By default, it will be false. All right, so we have defined two colors, one is pink and one is blue. After defining the color, we will define the width and the height variables. So by default, I would set the width to 200 and the height to 50. Apart from all of this, since we want to animate it, we also need one animation controller. We will initiate it in the init state. So I would just write late over here and inside the add override, just type in it, in this state. And here we will add controller. And inside it, we want to give a vsync. So for getting the vsync, we want to write with single tick provider state mixin. And now we can just write this over here, which will point to this single stick provider mixer. We will define the duration and the duration gonna be five seconds would be the best. So we can do one more thing. Since I want this animation to start on its own, here I can say forward, which will start the animation. And since this animation does not need it to stop and keep on going forever. So I would also write repeat over here and that will be all. So. What we are doing here is defining an animation controller with a duration of five seconds. Forward means we are starting the animation right now and repeat would simply repeat the animation. Now, since we have created animation controller explicitly, we will also need to handle dispose of it and controller.dispose. So here's the basic setup. Now to create the button, we will simply use a container. The Width is going to be the width that we have defined over here. And the height will be the height that we have defined. Now we can define the child, which would uh, simply be a text widget, which could say, click me. We can also define some style for it, text style. And first of all, we're gonna use the color. When we are hovering over the button, the color of the text is black. And when we are not hovering, the color is white. So we're gonna use the variable that we have created is hover to determine the color of the text. So we're gonna use is hover. And if we are hovering over it, we want the color to be black. Otherwise the color would be white. Now we're gonna set the size to 18, the font weight to font weight dot bold. Uh, let's just quickly run it so that we can see what we have created so far. Since we haven't defined any color of for the container, it is showing in black. So let's define a color. Okay, so in the child, we also want to wrap it with center. Okay, so we can see the button. Now let's define some properties. First of all, we don't really just need a plain color. So we will use decoration. So box decoration. And first of all, we would define the border radius and we would give a radius of 15. And then, as you can see, we have gradient. So we will use gradient. Now, we only want to display the gradient only when we are hovering over it. 
So again, we will use the is hover variable. And if we are hovering, we want the gradient to show. Otherwise, the gradient would not show. So let's save it. And just to test it, let's put true over here. And this is what our button gonna look like. So I'm gonna put back false again. Now, since if we have defined something like this, the colors of the gradient will not move, but we want them to move with the animation. So for that, we have one more property, transform. So we're gonna use this to actually move our gradient. So this will take a gradient transform, gradient, you would see we have a gradient rotation. So we're gonna use that. And here we want to pass how much radian we want to move. If you want to convert degrees to radian, let's say we have 15 degree. Let me just move it to new line so you can see better. So if you want to move 15 degree, then you're gonna multiply it by pi divided by 180. And don't forget to import it. This multiplying pi by 180 with any degree will give an equivalent radian. So now what we are going to do is we want to rotate the gradient at 360 degree. So one basic thing that the controller that we have defined here, the animation controller, by default, it would generate a value between zero and one. So here we don't really want the zero and one. We actually want zero to 360. So we would use controller because we want to animate it. So we have to use controller that value and since we want it from 0 to 360, we would multiply it by 360. And if you can see, we have two constant values. And if you solve it, I mean 360 divided by 180 would give you 2. So instead of writing all of this, we can simply multiply it by 2. And if you save it just now, you would not see anything. First of all, okay, let's just uh, make it true. You would notice that the gradient is not moving because the controller that value does not actually update or rebuild the UI. To actually rebuild the UI, you need to use an animation builder. So just create wrap it with a builder and <coughs> type animated builder. And this requires two things. First one is an animation which would be the controller that we have created. Second is the builder, which would accept two arguments. One is context and one is child. Right now we don't really using the child. So you can just simply put an underscore over here and that's it. If we save it now, you would notice our gradient is now moving. Now one thing to notice that it does not have a shadow. So let's quickly add a shadow after the gradient we would define box shadow. We would give it a list of box shadows. And here there are certain properties that we can define. First one is color. Then we would define some properties like blur radius, give it to 10 and spread radius, set it to 1.5. Let's give another shadow first. So this is, we have created two shadows, one with the color one and another one with the color two. Now if you save it, you would see the shadows kind of look like the same. And you can't really define it has two colors or not because these shadows are perfectly overlapping each other. So for that, we will use the offset property of the box shadow. So we would use offset dot from direction and here we just simply want to give a direction like we have given it here. We can simply copy it and paste it. And I'll just copy this and paste it here as well. If you look closely, you may be able to differentiate that the shadows are actually moving, but still it's difficult to differentiate normally if someone sees it. So for that, if you hover over the from offset dot from direction, you will notice it takes an optional argument of distance. So we're going to use that to make the offset more distinctable. And we would give it a distance of 3.5. And same with here as well, 3.5.
all right so now you can see more clearly that the shadows are moving but still you would not be able to notice that there are two shadows because you might have noticed that the value that we are getting here is also this exact same value we are passing here and here so both the shadows of different color are moving in the same rate and the same direction and that's why they are always overlapping each other so what we want is when the color one is at the starting the color two should be at the opposite side in other words it should have completed half of its distance so if the controller is giving the value of from 0 to 1 the half value would be 0 0.5 so we will increment 0 0.5 here to push the animation half cycle ahead so now if we save it now you can distinguish between the two shadows one is pink and one is blue okay one problem i can see the red part of the gradient is matching with the blue color of the shadows so we need to just swap the shadows so here would be color 2 and here would be color 1 and now we are matching the gradient with the shadows color apart from this one thing i noticed that if we create some sort of border over it it would be very much easily for any user to differentiate the button with the shadows so for that i would give a simple border to this button border.all and for the color i would use a white color with a slight opacity of 0.1 width would be 2 I notice one thing that uh, in the gradients when we are hovering we are showing the gradient and if we're not hovering we are showing no gradient but we haven't defined a color so just just give a color and this color would only be shown if we are not hovering so if we are hovering then do not show the color otherwise show a color and it would be gray color with 900 all right so now just see if we are not hovering how our button gonna look like all right perfectly fine our button will look like this when we are not hovering and when we hover we will get the gradient now the only thing is left is to change this is hover value on mouse entered and mouse exit and for that we are going to use inkwell widget so i would wrap the container in inkwell and this would take a couple of things first one is on hover now on hover we would get a value the value would be true if we are hovering so we will simply set is hover to the value and uh, we would also need on tap down method and on tap up method it, if we hover over it the button changed the background color and if we are not hovering it the button is back to its normal state now the only thing is left when we click the button the button should shrink its size and for that we have on tap down and on tap up method so when the button is down we would set the width to 190 and height to 45 and on tap up we would set the width back to the initial state which is 250 now if you just hold the button you would see a weird rectangle appears on the top of it and this is an overlay effect which is pre-built on several widgets like uh, elevated button which would give you a ripple effect now since in this case we don't want this ripple effect so we can simply set uh, the overlay color and it would need widget state property all and give the value colors dot transparent and write a const over here and with this line and if i now hold the button you would not see any weird overlay now our button is 99 percent completed the one problem is if you press down the mouse button and now if you drag outside of it the button size does not come back to its initial position the button is still shrink so to fix it we will come on on a hover and here and we can simply uh, make sure that if the width is not equal to 200 which is the initial width then we would set width to 200 
and hide to 50. Now if I just click on the button and move our cursor outside of the button, the button goes back to its initial state and size. And that's how you create this amazing glowing button in Flutter. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video with a new Flutter widget.